Hey y'all, K-Pop Med here, and today I'm going to be talking about my AMCAS application cycle um, for the 2022 and 2023 cycle. And so before I uh, get into this video, I just really want to thank N Square MD. I kind of used her video as kind of a format for how I want to structure my AMCAS video. Um, I'll link her video above over here, but um, um, she did a really great video on her very successful cycle, and I um, just really want to thank her for her video format. And so I have my computer over here, so that's why I'm referencing, I'm looking down, that's why I'm referencing it. So I'll be referencing it as I go. And so over this application cycle, um, I ended up applying to 54 MD schools um, and seven DO schools. And out of all of those um, applications, I ended up getting four MD interview invites and five DO interview invites. And out of those um, invites, I ended up getting two MD acceptances and three DO acceptances. And so now for my hours, I had about a thousand of clinical uh, work plus volunteering hours. So I just kind of grouped them together, clinical work and volunteering, about a thousand hours. Um, for my non-clinical volunteering, I had about 250 hours. Um, for my non-clinical work, um, I had about 200 hours. Leadership, I had about 500 hours and shadowing about 50 hours. Hi, Editing Kai here, and I just want to say that these hours are really mostly in part due to the fact that I took three gap years on top of my four-year undergraduate degree. So I really got a lot of time to kind of work in a clinical setting um, and get all these hours that I had. So don't feel overwhelmed or um, daunted by the amount of hours you have. Really, it's not about the amount of hours you have. Um, it's about how you can express these experiences on your activities, on your primaries, and in your interviews. So don't worry too much. Also, um, I forgot to mention this, but my stats were uh, 3.8 science GPA um, and a 512 MCAT. Um, subsections were 129 chem phys, um, 124 cars, 130 bio biochem, and 129 psych soch. And so my school list. Now, um, I know a lot of people say, you know, um, to not apply to a lot of schools. And, you know, I really understand that, you know. Uh, I'll get to it in a moment, but you know, secondary is really there. They're really hard to do and they're really hard to do well. And so it really makes sense really to apply to like 25 um, or 30 schools. It really makes a lot of sense. Um, for, for me though, personally, you know, I kind of wanted this application cycle to be my last application cycle. And so, you know, one and done. Um, and so I just thought, you know, I might as well just shoot my shot at any school that I thought I had a good chance at. And so that essentially led me to apply to, um, you know, 54 MD schools and seven DO schools. Um, and I'll have my school list uh, listed somewhere over here. Um, but yeah, um, and there are indeed some schools that I would remove and I'll also list them over here too. Some schools like, you know, the Sunnis, I don't know why I had those in there. Um, yeah, so, you know, just some schools that, you know, if I had to apply a second time around, I probably would not put them in there. And so now, secondaries. Oh man, I'm sure, you know, at the time of recording this video, our pre-med, our um, student doctor network, you know, we're all talking about secondaries. How many secondaries are coming in? You know, oh my gosh, how many secondaries? How am I going to finish all these secondaries? Uh, very, very warranted. And back then, you know, I was sitting in this exact seat, actually. Um, I, you probably referenced a previous video. I was sitting in this exact location, just kind of bemoaning secondaries. And so, you know, some schools really, I received a secondary pretty much from every single school that I applied to um, besides Indiana, but Indiana doesn't have a secondary. So I guess that doesn't really count. They only give you a secondary if you get interviews, so it doesn't really count. Um, but you know, some of them were really long. I think one, one of them that was especially long was the University of Miami. Great school I hear, but extremely long secondary. Um, and you know, it was a real slog, you know. Uh, I would turn through about one a day and oh man, like, Every day, just write one, just write one. Some days I couldn't even finish one. Some days I had to split them up. You know, some schools where they had like six or seven problems, I had to like write one, rest, write one, rest. And sometimes I wouldn't even get through one. Um, and pretty much really all I was doing was I was writing them, proofreading them by myself. Didn't really use anything else, just proofread by myself. And I submitted them pretty much the same day. I was kind of afraid to, you know, show my friends because um, honestly, uh, unlike my activities and my primary, um, <laughs> my secondaries honestly were I personally felt like they were not that good pretty much I was writing and proofreading them and then sending it off and I was afraid to really send it to my friends because you know I wasn't really sure how good it would be um, 
and you know because of the amount of schools that you kind of apply to your secondaries are kind of bound to be not that good so if i went back again would i do the same thing um probably yeah you know um i really wanted to make sure that you know as an applicant i would get in and i wanted to guarantee as many interviews as possible so um, going back, I would definitely have done the same thing and applied to that main school and slogged through it. Just a word of encouragement for everybody, you know, y'all can get through this. It's a slog right now, but it'll be worth it at the end. Okay, moving on. So now we're going to talk about our interview invites now. And so I'm going to go through this more or less chronologically from DO and MD. So on um, July 24th, you can actually reference a video I had back about a year ago, um, I actually received an a, um, interview invite from Toro, Nevada, asking me to interview for the August 2022 cohort. So the cohort that was going to start last year. Um, and so they said, you know, they had spots in the class. They haven't filled them yet. So they asked me if I wanted to interview. Um, at that time, I declined them because, you know, I just really did not want to. Um, I wanted to see how good my app was. I already kind of submitted my MCAS and my AACOMAS. I wanted to see the full fruits of my application cycle. So I decided, you know, to uh, respectfully decline it. You know, I'm still very grateful of the opportunity that I had um, to interview there. And so going forward, you know, I got um, my first interview in by at Des Moines University on um, July the 29th. And then I got my second, second interview in by um, at California Health Sciences University on August the 15th. Uh, my third one at uh, Kansas City University, August the 17th. And then my um, Toro, Nevada interview invite I got on September the 23rd and um, Toro, California, I received on um, October the 3rd. Um, and I, you know, that first interview that I had with uh, that invite with DMU, I was honestly really relieved because, um, you know, <laughs> you know, you submit them and you wait and you're just like, oh man, when are, when are interviews going to come out? Oh man, oh man, oh man, you know, so, um, you know, it's nerve wracking, but, um, you know, uh, if you wrote a good app, there's really nothing you should be worried about. And so next off, I'm going to talk about my MD interview invite. So um, I received my first MD interview invite on um, September the 23rd. And I remember I was sitting in bed and I got this email and I almost couldn't believe it. I, I just didn't think that, you know, they, 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 uh, they, would, they would send an interview invite to me. So when I got an um, uh, interview invite from this MD school, um, this is Texas Christian University, um, I was very, very surprised and just ecstatic. And then a couple days later, um, I received an interview invite from both Virginia Commonwealth University. Um, this would be on September 28th. And then also Western Michigan um, University on September 28th. And then I had a kind of a lull of interview invites and everything. And, you know, I was doing interviews and everything. And then, you know, once right when you think it's over, uh, it's not. So I received uh, my fourth interview invite um, from the University of Central Florida on uh, June 20th. Now I'm going to go through kind of my impressions about how I felt um, after each interview from each of the schools. So Des Moines University um, was my first interview um, that I scheduled and um, you know I had uh, this interview you know it was my very first interview so there were kind of kinks that I had to uh, kind of move around and everything and you know kind of kinks I had to iron out. Um, as a result you know this interview eh, not my best performance, honestly. Um, the answers were kind of shaky. It really could have been a lot better. Um, but for a first interview, honestly, not that bad. Um, and then my second interview was with uh, California Health Sciences University. Um, and for this one, I actually did, like, I actually paid um, for uh, Fiverr prep. So I just went on this website, it's called Fiverr. Um, and this website, you know, you can pay people to do kind of gig stuff. And I just paid someone to interview me. It, was, it wasn't really that expensive, about like 20, 20 bucks. Um, but this person was like a medical student. And so, you know, after I did that interview prep, um, I had much more firmer, much more better answers that I could um, uh, talk about to the admissions committee. So um, that was really nice. Um, and so, you know, I thought I did a lot better at the California Health Sciences University interview. And then um, after that, I had the Kansas City University interview. And so this one, you know, uh, I also thought I did pretty well. You know, I vibed with the interviewers pretty well. Um, there was one ethical question that I kind of struggled to answer. Um, honestly, I think one of the hardest parts of this application cycle are these ethical questions that they ask you. And so I struggled to answer this one. Um, but overall, I thought the interview went pretty good as well. This was my third interview at this point. So, you know, I was kind of getting used to um, dressing up in a suit and a tie and everything and kind of um, telling the admissions committee, you know, about me. 
And so after that, uh, I declined Toro, Nevada, and I also declined Toro, California, uh, for reasons that I will state later on. But then after uh, Toro, Nevada and Toro, California, I did my uh, Texas Christian University interview. So this was my first multiple mini interview. And you know, I really, really liked it. Uh, you know, they really had prompts that kept you on your feet, but also let you have fun with it. I really, really, I think, thrive during these MMI kind of style interviews, you know. Um, I would kind of work off the prompt and kind of try and think of creative solutions or creative answers. Um, not creative, I would say, maybe just like answers from my heart, from my personal experience, from my various medical experiences that I had. And I felt like it was much easier to incorporate my previous experiences with MMIs versus the traditional interview. Um, you know, and I really vibe with the people at Texas Christian University at TCU and they were very welcoming people. And then I had my VCU interview, which uh, was actually the day after. Um, and so, you know, this interview was conducted East Coast time. So I was up at like 5.30 a.m. because I, I really, I did not want to take BTO on that day. So I was up at 5 or 5.30 a.m. interview. And, you know, this one was a bit harder. Uh, the questions were, I thought, you know, a little bit harder, but I think I, I still, you know, I was able to get my point across. I was able to communicate effectively. And I was able to really show the admissions committee who I was as a person and give good answers, you know, that weren't overly scripted, but you know, were still very informative about me. Um, and then Western Michigan, I had that interview after these two interviews, I think like a week after. Uh, this was the phone interview. They called me, asked me a couple questions. I did all right on these interviews. Honestly, nothing to write home about or anything. And um, University of Central Florida, uh, I declined this interview and I will go into why later uh, on in the video. And so here are my application cycle results. I just really want to put a, I want to start with the rejections because you know, a lot of this cycle is rejections. You know, I got a whole lot of rejections um, before I got acceptances and you know, want to be transparent. You know, my first rejection I received from Georgetown in Indiana um, on September the 9th and, you know, receiving these, you know, I didn't really think I had a chance at these schools, um, but you know, they were the first rejections that I had and I'll remember those as the, you know, the schools that rejected me, you know, uh, it happens. Um, but going forward, uh, my first acceptance was to California Health Sciences University um, on September 21st. Um, and I was very, very relieved because, you know, I'm going to be a doctor. Um, and that was very, very relieving to hear that I was going to be a physician. Uh, very exciting. And then um, I had my second acceptance on um, September the 26th, and this was at Des Moines University. Um, and they gave, actually gave me, sent me a text message and then they sent me an email. Um, but also very excited. It was a very great school. You know, I was really ready to pack up my bags and uh, move to Des Moines and everything. You know, um, they have the Iowa caucuses there for any political junkies. So, you know, it, it's really cool. Um, and they also sent a lot of goodies. They, they sent me a shirt and they sent me like a, a notebook and I still use those this day. So very nice school, very great institution, you know, totally would go there. And then, so then my third acceptance was to Virginia Commonwealth University on October the 17th. And when I got this acceptance, um, it was an email form. Uh, so I, I wasn't really sure if it was going to come uh, because they said that it would come at four specific times uh, throughout the year. Um, but it came on the first, you know, the first possible day. And so, you know, I was accepted and I was ecstatic. I was in my kitchen. I was telling everybody, calling my dad, you know, telling my, my girlfriend. Uh, and I was super happy that, you know, I got it into Virginia Commonwealth University, great institution, one of my top choice schools. Um, so at that point, you know, very, very happy. And then um, Kansas City University came about four days later on um, October the 10th. And again, very, very excited. Um, great school. They had rotations in the Bay Area as well, which was only a plus for me. So, you know. Very, very happy that, you know, I kind of got that acceptance to Kansas City University. And then finally, um, I got my um, acceptance to TCU on October 21st, and it was very cute. Um, they gave me a phone call. The, and the phone call was very personal. Everyone that I met there was always just so nice, so welcoming. They have a very innovative curriculum. I really liked, you know, their emphasis on, you know, being empathetic scholars. It, it was really great. So Western Michigan, I ended up getting a rejection around April and May. Still though, I hear a pretty good school, um, pretty newer school. I find that the newer schools are a little bit more innovative, a little bit more new in the way that they kind of handle their curriculum. So, you know, I really did like Western Michigan. Shame that they rejected me, really would have considered going there. Um, and finally, um, in January, you know, 
um, I declined the interview invite at University of Central Florida. And so I declined it because at this point I had already received um, acceptances to two schools that I thought, you know, were pretty good MD schools and I didn't really feel a need to kind of interview again for um, a school that, you know, honestly I wasn't, I was considering, but it wasn't really a school that would come to the top of my mind. And so, you know, I thought about it for a moment and then I ended up just um, um, declining, respectfully declining that interview offer. I kind of regret it now because they have pretty cheap tuition. Um, you know, Orlando, Florida, that's where Disney World is. You know, I hear pretty good weather, um, you know, so kind of regret rejecting it. But, you know, I kind of really didn't want to take the time off. Um, and so, you know, I'll never know. But, you know, University of Central Florida, that was the one MD interview that I declined. Um, and of course, I also declined California Health Sciences and I also declined Toro, California, because at that point, you know, um, I'd already been accepted to pretty good DO schools. I didn't really feel a need to, you know, interview at um, Toro, California or uh, Toro, Nevada anymore. So I respectfully declined those. And so now, um, really, um, the moment that everyone's been waiting for, um, what school will I be going to um, for the uh, next four years of my life? And happy to announce that I'll be going to Virginia Commonwealth University in Richmond, Virginia. Um, very excited to go to this institution. Um, I've never been to the East Coast before, um, so this will be a really exciting time for me. Um, it's a nice, cute, you know, urban, but not too urban city. Lower cost of living, um, a different environment. Great institution, been established since 1838. Um, and, you know, um, all around I've heard great people. I've had a chance to visit them during, during their Acceptance Students Week. Really liked the area. I got to meet my, you know, future roommate. Um, it was a very, it was kind of a hard decision, though, between Texas Christian and um, Virginia Commonwealth, though, because, you know, Texas Christian uh, is located to a really big airport hub. Um, so, you know, <laughs> you know, it's very close to California. It's just like one plane ride away. Richmond, um, there's no, essentially no direct flights connecting. So it was pretty hard. But, you know, given the established nature of Virginia Commonwealth University and, you know, um, also non-mandatory attendance, true pass-fail, uh, rotations that I hear are really good, you know, between um, the Virginia Commonwealth University system and the Ver Veterans Affairs McGuire um, Health Center, um, you know, this really seemed like the no-brainer choice. And so um, I ended up uh, planning to enroll and I recently committed to enroll at Virginia Commonwealth University and I'm very happy to say that I'm going to be going there. To everyone who's stuck around with me since my MCAT studying days um, from that very first MCAT blog, you know, um, I finally made it and for anybody that's new, you know, welcome. I'm happy to have you. And so, you know, hope that if you enjoyed this, um, that you would consider following my channel as I kind of document to the best of my ability my journey through medical school and beyond so thank you very much and hope you all have a very 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 wonderful day thank you bye